What is going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Eric and I am so glad that you are here with me today. Hey, today we have a good old fashioned rivalry. Today we're talking about old Polaroid versus new Polaroid. Which one's gonna be the best one for you? With the resurgence of the obsession of film photography and instant cameras, you're bound to come into a situation where you have to make a choice. Do you wanna get a brand new Polaroid camera one step two? Or do you wanna get something with a little bit more style, a little bit more class, something that shows off your own personality and go with the vintage camera? Either way, you're gonna be golden. You're gonna produce amazing photos, but the matter of choice can kind of be hard because you don't know which one that you want. So today we're gonna to talk about those very things in this video. But before we go any further, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. So that way you get notified every time that I put out videos on Polaroids just like this one. Also, before we get started, let me know in the comments, do you have an old Polaroid or do you have a new one? Or if you don't have one, let me know which one that you would prefer and tell me a little bit why. I like to know, I like to hear your opinions on why you think one is better than the other. Let's get into it. To show respect to our elders, we're gonna talk about all of the pros about um, old cameras, and then I'll talk about some of the cons, and then we'll move into the newer cameras, the new Polaroid One Step 2, we'll talk about that a bit. So right out the gate, the number one thing that I love about old vintage Polaroid cameras is the vintage style. Now this is my Polaroid 620 Amigo, and the thing that I was drawn to it right off the bat, the first time I ever laid eyes on it, was its color. It's this sand color, and you just don't really see that on a Polaroid camera. It's like a like a really, really light brown. Plus, if you can see that, it has the, uh, the old Polaroid logo, the vintage rainbow logo, which I think is really cool. First things you gotta kinda think about are, does this camera match my style? Now, some of you may not care. You just think, look, I just want a camera, and it's going to take photos for me, and that's gonna be it but a lot of people like to not only dress a certain way and style themselves a certain way, but they like to have a conversation starter. And so whenever you have an old Polaroid camera, it is always, I mean always, a conversation starter. Specifically when I take this one out or I take any of my Polaroid cameras that are made before the 90s and I'm out and about, whether I'm shooting downtown or I'm shooting at the park, I always have someone come up to me who's usually a little bit older, maybe in their 40s or in their 50s, and it instantly brings them back to a, a time of nostalgia. They talk about their kids and they talk about always having a Polaroid camera for their birthday parties and making sure that they were snapping photos and documenting those, those memories. And what's really cool is it instantly brings somebody who used to shoot Polaroid back to a place of, like I said, just nostalgia and it makes them feel really good. So if you wanna make connections and you wanna meet people and you always wanna kinda of maybe avoid that awkwardness, um, having an old one is really a great way to go when it comes to that. Now another thing that I like about the old Polaroids is that it has, sometimes these cameras have different features that may not be available on the cameras that are being made today. And what I mean by that is here, usually on the right side or on the left side, if it's a 600 camera, a lot of the times it has um, the option to shoot from like four feet to infinity, a lot further away, or it gives you the option to slide a slider and it puts a almost like a fake lens in front of your, your lens that you already have to shoot a little bit close up. I also have seen Polaroids that talk and you can record funny things that are, that are said when you press the shutter. So you always gotta check out the features of the old cameras because a lot of times they were just quirky or they were designed with a cool color or Looney Tunes or they were made with um, funky colors or, or just different things that are there that you may not have in the new camera. So it's something to think about. And the last thing that I like about shooting with the old cameras or just having an old camera in general is that it really allows you to be um, an individual. You're shooting film already, so you're already breaking the rules when it comes to photography in today's day and age. But when you have your camera and you picked it for whatever reason, maybe it was the cheapest one you could find, or maybe you searched and searched and searched and you, you, know, you found a camera and maybe it was broken and you fixed it. Um, you know, the cool thing about shooting on a vintage camera is that it gives your yourself your own personal story to tell somebody. And um, I've been able to make a lot of connections and make a lot of friends and create a lot of memories just on my old cameras that it just, I don't know, it gives me that warm and fuzzy. It makes me feel uh, connected to, to cameras. I even can tell the difference 
um, on photos that I have shot that I have either in boxes or in, or in storage, I can tell which ones were shot on my brand new camera and I can sh tell which ones are shot on the old run. So you can definitely tell some nuances if you really know your photos and you really know what you're looking for. Um, you can tell the difference between an old camera and a new camera. Now, we talked about the good, and I have to talk to you about some of the drawbacks of shooting on a vintage camera. And right off the bat, if you take a camera like this, for example, that was made in the 70s, it's fragile, right? So with the new ones, you don't really have to worry about parts or damaging. They're made a lot tougher. The plastic's a lot harder. Sometimes a vintage camera, a vintage Polaroid camera, feels really, really plasticky. And that can kind of weigh in the back of your mind. You know, if you're out and about shooting and you're walking from place to place and you and you have this around your neck, one of the things that I worry about a lot of times when I'm shooting with my old camera is, am I gonna bump into something? Am I gonna drop it? Is it gonna smash up against the, the stairs or a handrail? And am I gonna get scuffs or is it gonna break? You know, a lot of times these cameras may have been sitting in a garage outside and that plastic has really dr dried out over the years. And so they aren't the most durable things. Um, so you really do have to baby them and take care of them because if you wanna fix one of your old cameras, you wanna fix one of your old Polaroids, it's probably gonna cost you a pretty penny to get it back up and running if you do damage it. Second drawback to shooting on a vintage Polaroid is depending on the model, if you're starting to get back into older cameras like XX70s or your, even some of the early 600 models, like this one for example, there's no flash. You have to find flash packs that honestly are pretty expensive today, but you can find some of them on eBay. I'll link them below. Um, and they have to be inserted into um, the top part of the camera and then they're like, you know, used every time. So I think they normally come in a pack of three or four. And if you want the flash on that camera, sometimes you're gonna have to go out of your way and buy that. But if you do what I do, and I know that I'm shooting a vintage Polaroid camera that doesn't have a flash built in, I just stick to shooting uh, during the day. Also, just doesn't have the modern tech that the new cameras does, and it also doesn't give you the option to set this on a tripod. Now that's not true for all. Some of them do have the options with the threads in the bottom, so that way you can hook this up on a tripod. Um, but, you know, some of those features just aren't there on the old camera. Um, and so that's something to think about when you're considering buying an old one. Moving right along to the modern, the brand new Polaroid camera. This is the one step two when it came out. It's been out for a little over a year and a half. And let's talk about the things that I really enjoy about this camera. The first thing that comes to my mind when I think about this camera that I absolutely love is I have tons and tons of film options. You know, with the 600 cameras, you can have one type of film that goes in there and that's gonna be Polaroid 600. But with the One Step 2, you got some options. You can use the 600, which essentially, if you don't know what that means, that means that it has the battery pack built into the film cassette. Or you can use the iType film that they released for this camera specifically. It doesn't have the uh, battery pack built in and you are gonna run off the battery that's built in to this Polaroid, which is a feature that the old Polaroids don't have. So you can charge this, you can plug this in the wall and keep this guy going. The benefit to that is that the iType film is cheaper than the 600 film. Think about it, it doesn't have a battery built in so it's not gonna cost them as much money to make, which means they can sell it to you for cheaper. Now a pair of features that I really enjoy about the One Step 2 is what we were just talking about. You can set this bad boy on a tripod so you can get a really, really steady shot, especially if you're shooting portraits or you're shooting some things with movement. You know, if you're moving and you're trying to shoot at the same time, you may get a blurry photo, but this allows you to set it on a tripod and be able to make sure that you're locked in and you're getting a super still shot. It also has this cool selfie timer. So if you're out with your friends or you're out, you know, a lot of times you can't shoot the both of you, but if you have that tripod or if you have a wall or something sturdy to set it on, there is a button, it's right here at the top, and you can press that button and it's gonna give you some time to get into the frame so that way you and your buddy, your friend, your mom, your dad, your girl, side chick, can get in that photo with you. Last but not least, my favorite thing, and I think that's a really benefit to a photographer, especially if this is gonna be your go-to film camera, is that Polaroid's giving you a one-year warranty on this camera, and that has to do with anything internally with the camera, the motor, the mechanisms, the flash, things like that. Um, it doesn't cover things if you drop it, if you run this over with your car, it won't cover, but if there's anything wrong, Polaroid's gonna make sure that they take care of you, and they're gonna make sure that you you know, are squared away with this camera because let's be, let's be real, 
I can buy a vintage Polaroid camera at a garage sale and I can show you exactly what to look for if you want to buy one second hand. I'll link that video here. But a brand new Polaroid is going to cost you 99 bucks. And that's no small amount of change for someone who's going to be getting into a hobby just to shoot, you know, pictures for fun. So they do give you that benefit. They do want to make sure that if you have anything wrong with that camera, that you're going to be taken care of. And wrapping this video up, the things that I just don't absolutely love about this camera, they're few and far between. Um, one I've mentioned before um, is the viewfinder alignment. Um, when you're looking through the viewfinder, the, the viewfinder alignment is off. So you want to make sure that you're really practicing with this camera so you don't chop heads off and you don't chop knees off. I am trying to get my hands on one of the brand new released uh, Polaroid One Step 2s that have the extended viewfinder on. Um, they designed the viewfinder now to look more like the vintage cameras. So we'll see if that makes a difference. And then the only thing I don't like is sometimes I forget. So we have those multiple film options, the 600 film or the eye type. Sometimes you don't recall which film that you have in there. And especially if you put your camera down for a month or a month and a half and you can't recall, well, you have to make sure that you keep the camera charged because if you have the eye type film and the camera is dead, you can't shoot with it which is kind of a bummer. So it is kind of a hassle because one of the benefits about a Polaroid camera when it was initially thought up was, you know, you don't have to maintain the batteries on it. You don't have to maintain the thing that you would on a digital camera. You just grab it, put film in, and you're good to go. Well, with this, again, depending on the film, if you have that eye type film in, the film that does not have the battery, well, then you gotta make sure that you're doing your part and that you're keeping it charged. And there you have it again. Tell me which camera you have. Do you have an old one or do you have a new one? I'd love to hear from you. And if this video, uh, you enjoyed it, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. I'm putting videos out at least once a week and I'd love for us to become pals, to become homies, to become friends. Hey, if you wanna stay posted on what I have going on on my day-to-day -day life, you can always follow me on Instagram at I'm Eric Brown Jr. And I will see you guys on the next one.